I wouldn't do a lesson on such a straightforward definition unless it was very important, and this one certainly is. So in today's Wrath of Math lesson, we'll quickly go over the definition of a bounded sequence. Turns out to be a very important property for a sequence to have. Now, to define what it means for a sequence to be bounded, we basically just reduce it to the definition of a bounded set. So we say a sequence AN is bounded if and only if the set of values that the sequence takes on, the set of terms of the sequence, which we can write like this, this just contains every term in the sequence, if this set is bounded, then we say that the sequence is bounded. Now, thinking of sequences as functions from the natural numbers to the real numbers tells us that this is the range of the function or the range of the sequence. So the sequence is bounded if the range of values that it takes on is bounded as well. And a very nice equivalent way we can state that without having to write out sets is just that a sequence is bounded if and only if there exists two real numbers, L, a lower bound, and U, an upper bound, and these are single lower and upper bounds, so they don't depend on the term of the sequence. It's a single lower bound and a single upper bound, so that every term of the sequence is greater than or equal to the lower bound, but less than or equal to the upper bound. The lower and upper bound are not unique. They're not even necessarily distinct, although they usually will be. Let's see some examples to help clarify the definition. Here's the sequence of reciprocals of natural numbers. So the terms of this sequence are 1 over 1, 1 over 2, 1 over 3, and so on. Is this sequence bounded? Let's go through the definition one more time real quick. A sequence is bounded if and only if there exist real numbers L and U so that L is less than or equal to every term of the sequence and U is greater than or equal to every term of the sequence. So indeed, this sequence of reciprocals of natural numbers is indeed bounded. What would be an upper bound U for this sequence? Well, remember, the first term is one, and after that, these natural numbers in the denominator get bigger and bigger, so the values of the sequence get smaller and smaller. So one would be an upper bound of this sequence. To emphasize that these bounds are not unique, two, three, four, five, a hundred, those are all also upper bounds. Of course, if some number is greater than or equal to every term of the sequence, then we can just make that number bigger and bigger and bigger and get more and more upper bounds. So they're not unique. And what about a lower bound for this sequence? Well, certainly every term of this sequence is positive. So zero is a certain nice, safe, easy lower bound of this sequence. So it is bounded. Another important thing to notice is that there are sort of two parts to a sequence being bounded. There is having a lower bound and having an upper bound. If a sequence has a lower bound, we can say specifically that it's bounded below. We might not know if the sequence is bounded because we might not know that it also has an upper bound, but if we know it has a lower bound, we can say it's bounded below. Same thing goes, if we know a sequence has an upper bound, we can say it's bounded above, though it may or may not be completely bounded depending on whether or not it has a lower bound. This sequence here is bounded above because it has an upper bound and it's bounded below because it has a lower bound. Let's see some examples of sequences that aren't bounded but they are bounded above or below. Here's a very simple example. This is just the sequence of natural numbers, one, two, three, four, and so on. Certainly, this sequence does not have an upper bound. It's not bounded above. The terms of this sequence just get bigger and bigger. So it's not bounded above, thus it's not bounded. But it does have a lower bound, so it is bounded below. The smallest term of this sequence is one, so one is definitely a lower bound. One is less than or equal to every term of the sequence. So this sequence isn't bounded, but it is bounded below. Now let's see an example of a sequence that isn't bounded, but is bounded above. 
the nth term of this sequence is n times 1 minus n. So the first term, when n equals 1, is 1 times 1 minus 1, or 1 times 0, which is 0. And 0, in fact, is an upper bound of this sequence. As n gets bigger in the following terms of the sequence, we have a bigger and bigger positive factor here, and then this factor, 1 minus n, gets more and more negative. So their product is an increasingly large negative number, it's not bounded below. So this is an example of a sequence has no lower bound. It's not bounded below, so it's not bounded, but it does have an upper bound. And that's basically it. So once more, a sequence is bounded if and only if there exist real numbers L and U, a lower and upper bound, so that every term of the sequence is greater than or equal to L, the lower bound, but less than or equal to U, the upper bound. These bounds are not unique, they're not even necessarily distinct. I guess I should show you a quick example of that. Consider the constant sequence I'll write like this, a n equals 1, so every term of this sequence is 1. This is a bounded sequence. 1 is a lower bound of this sequence, and 1 is an upper bound of this sequence. Since 1 is less than or equal to 1, which is less than or equal to one. Kind of a funny example. One last thing before we go, there is an equivalent statement, or rather an equivalent formulation of this definition, which we'll prove soon in another lesson. The basic idea behind this other definition that we'll prove is that a sequence is bounded if and only if there exists some real number c that's greater than or equal to the absolute value of every term in the sequence. Kind of neat, so you don't have to worry about a lower and upper bound. If a sequence is bounded, you know there's some real number that's greater than or equal to the absolute value of every term in the sequence. Now, if you were trying to find this number c that satisfies this condition and you already knew your sequence was bounded, how do you think you would find c from the lower and upper bound? Give that a little bit of thought. Let me know what you think in the comments. Hopefully this lesson helped you understand what a bounded sequence is. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time and be sure to subscribe for the jolliest math lessons on the internet.